first of all, I was I was on Enterprise. We knew that something was up with Enterprise. You know how you know when maybe there's going to be a problem? Uh-oh. You're in the art department, and people you never saw before are coming in with tape measures and measuring the room. <laughs> and like we look at each other, we're like, that's a bad sign. <laughs> when we found out the show was canceled, we didn't find out from the front office. We found out on the inter- the fledgling internet at the time. And I remember uh, driving home. I'd been on the show like 17 years. That's crazy. You know, you usually don't get a gig like that, you know. Uh, and I'm thinking, boy, I'm never going to work again. I'm sure I used up everything. That's all my good luck. I, there's not going to be any more. And I got home and Dorothy meets me at the door and says, uh, there's a message from Gary Hutzel on the phone for you. The night I found out Enterprise was canceled. G- Gary Hutzel? Yes, Gary was... I'm sure you knew him. He was a visual effects supervisor on Deep Space Nine. Mm. And uh, he was a wonderful guy. And we, if like I said, if you worked in the art department, you work closely with visual effects. Because if Gary was doing a show and he ran out of money, he knew that he could come to us and we would build a Klingon space station out of junk. You know, sewage strainers and colanders and, you know, all kinds. We kept stuff. And Gary, well, uh, a Romulan would remind you that a Klingon cruiser is junk, by the way. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yes, it should be all the way as garbage. <laughs> that's what the line I was thinking of. That's a Klingon <laughs> saying that to the other <laughs> Yeah. You know, when we did that uh, episode, Trials and Tribulations, that was like a high watermark for us. I mean, mm-hmm. and Mike and Denise, and we were all original series, big time original series fans. And to get to do, to go back, and recreate those sets was just like mind boggling for us. We were so excited. And you look at them today and it's still amazing what we did. Um, that was a time, I mean, I have to say that i had been studying to work on Star Trek since I was like 13 years old when the original series was on. And I collected slides and photos and newspaper clippings and I, I, when I when we did Trials and Tribulations, I had stuff I had saved since I was 13 years old to use as reference material. Wow. Now you could go on the internet and I could type in Enterprise Bridge and 60,000 things will come up. Back then, you couldn't do that. If you didn't have the stuff already, you were, there was no place to get it. Paramount didn't have anything. They had nothing. So we, we recreated all those sets from reference material that I'd been saving for years and years and years and years. I, we had VHS tapes at the time. Uh, oh, so I was telling my story. I got sidetracked. You know, that's one of the things I tend to go off. And you know, <laughs> I'm driving home. And I'm thinking, I've had it. I come home and Dorothy says, there's a, there's a message from Gary Hutzel. And Gary, I knew, was in Vancouver on Battlestar Galactica. I'm thinking, oh, my God, he's going to ask me to come to Galactica. And I call him. And uh, he says, I heard about Enterprise. I'm like, yeah. And he says, well, you know, every cloud has a silver lining. <laughs> <laughs> and that's when he asked me to come and be CG supervisor on Galactica. Now, Galactica is, Ron Moore's Galactica is more a descendant of Star Trek, those shows that we did, than Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> if, you, if you ever watch the old Galactica, when I got when I got the look, I had seen it. I wasn't hooked on it like I was Star Trek. Uh, but when I got on when I got on the new one, I said I'm going to go buy the series and I'm going to watch it, learn everything about it. I'd seen it before, man. I got about four episodes in and I was like, oh, <laughs> watch it anymore? No, <laughs> oh, no. It's really listen. There were charming characters and you know some fun stuff, but ultimately it was for the kiddies. You know, um, it, it was really weird to me that. In, this, in, the, in the pilot episode, they lost the whole planet was destroyed by silence, and they go to like a discotheque and they're partying and smoking weed. <laughs> you don't even care. It was 1979, <laughs> baby. 1979. Hey, get over it, man. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, yeah, G- Gary didn't forget me. You know, he, he, he snatched me up right away. I went right from Enterprise to Battlestar Galactica, which was. And so you amazing. did go to Vancouver or? Did you move there? Did you move to Vancouver? Uh, or? I was in Vancouver for one season. Mm. They treated me really well, man. I mean, they, they, I had a fantastic apartment in the middle of Vancouver, which is a great city. Uh, I had a like a, a they, get, they rented me a Jeep, 
a Jeep. It was a Wrangler or something, you know, that they rented. And yeah. I would drive to work in, you know. And then they gave me, on top of that, they gave me a per diem, you know, I money see. on top of my pay. It was really, I mean, look, it's hard to be away from home. I, I, I don't want to be away from home, you know. But uh, if I if I had to do it, that was a, a really great way to, you know, for it to happen. Galactica was a fantastic experience. And Gary was just one of the funniest nicest i mean we laughed constantly it was everything was a big joke to us you know <laughs> and we did some incredible work on that show i mean we got a couple of emmys for it um and you watch it today and even though it was how many years ago now this stuff still is like feature quality and then 12 years ago you, you know what it was about that show first there was a lot of star trek people went over there you had ron moore who produced it. And then you had Gary, and then I was there. And, uh, art department was Richard Hadolin and uh, Doug McLean, and I idolized those guys, the work that they did. Um, it, um, I forgot where I was going with that. <laughs> That's what happens. It happens. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's happening I, I, more, more all the time. <laughs> I had a question about, uh, I see that, you know, you, you still have the stickers that you put up on, on, the, the stations. Yeah. What is your favorite little treasure trinket that you've kept uh, from Star Trek over the years? Wow. I mean, I see the robot behind you. I yeah, think lost Ryan in has, space. Yeah, Ryan I mean, has one of those. Yeah, I got. <laughs> let's see. Oh boy, we're about to get a, a tour of sci-fi stuff. History. If I could do this without destroying, like if you look over here. I've got, oh, I got a Nomad. See Nomad? I don't know. I thought I saw a Mugatu up there for a second. Well, there's a, oh God. <laughs> See up there, that's, that's the uh, spacesuit. Oh, wow. That's with good. Kirk in it from Star Trek, the motion picture. Yeah. Oh, okay. That yeah. flies around Epsilon 9. And I've got so much stuff. You know, I've got in my garage, I've got a 14 foot. It's not a miniature. There was a show called My Favorite Martian when I was a kid. Right. It had Ray Walston in it as a Martian. Ray Walston was a big Broadway star. And Bill Bixby. Remember Bill Bixby? Yeah. The Hulk TV show. What happens is that the Martian crashes on Earth and Bill Bixby finds him and he nurses him back to health and he can't go back to Mars because his ship is messed up and it's hidden in his garage. He's got to keep that a secret. I've got, it's not the actual one. It was a copy. It was used in Men in Black 2. Uh, it's a it's an exact duplicate of Uncle Martin's spaceship from My Favorite Martian. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I just, you know, I got a four foot sea view over here. Uh, uh, I've got a I've got a five foot Nautilus from about twenty thousand leagues under the sea. Wow! The, uh, Disney film, which is one of my favorite science fiction movies of all time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's like I'm a fan, you know, and uh, I, it's not just a job to me. I don't want to work on a show really that's a, about a law firm. You know, it's great to work. It's great to work, be in the business, but I'm meant to do certain things, you know, and that is science fiction. And, and, and anything with uh, technology is just something I, I'm possessed by, by it, you know. Mm -hmm. um, what is there any one particular thing? God, wow. That's really, really <laughs> 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 um, that's, that's a hard, that's a hard oh, answer. That's a hard answer. That kind of shoots my question then, because I had a, a similar question that might be equally difficult to answer. Actually, we're, we're almost out of time here, but two quick, fun, nerdy questions for us nerds. Um, number one is Star Trek related. What was your favorite creation? Like, was it uh, a specific backdrop that you created or, or a ship or something yeah. like that? And then the second one is going to be uh, the upcoming third season of the Orville. What do you think the the fans are going to feel when they see it do you think they're just above all they're going to laugh do you think above all they're going to be blown away by the special effects or you know what well you know a brandon fayette who's the supervisor who does the visual effects on the show is a, a great guy and they're really doing some ambitious stuff this season it's funny i was writing with him across the 20th century 
box lot to one of the stages. And he says, you know, I was eight years old when I watched Next Generation. <laughs> Holy cow. But, uh, yeah, and, and people can really be affected by stuff that you, you've, uh, you've worked on. I, you know, I, I will say that Orville, it's, 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 it's a dramedy, you know? It, it's not a sitcom, but funny things happen in it. Um, I, I found that from season one to season two, the show got a little more serious. Mm-hmm. And, and season three is funny. They want to do. They want to tell a real story. It's not just funny things happening to people. So every every episode has, uh, you know, there's really a lot going on. Um, you know, it's funny. I just watched one last night. I can't remember the name of it. It had Tim Russ in it. Uh, they find a time capsule. You know. Yeah. Uh, second season. Yeah, and there's an iPhone. And um, Scott Grimes character takes it and uh they're able to feed all the information from it into the computer and the computer can recreate this gal's world who and he ends up going in there and falling in love with her and it's a really sensitive warm story you know it's great stuff um i i i I find orville is a little more the way i like my star trek where it's not it's it's not you know what I mean? Um, it's funny. I was just reading an article today. Patrick Stewart, uh, even though he's the star of Picard, says that he was shocked by the use of profanity on Picard. Uh, I think that they use the F word. A few times. F word is fuck, by the way. <laughs> yes, I thought it was Ferengi. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and you know what? See, for me, I don't want to see these people being just like us. You know what I mean? That we can't talk without using profanity and being crude and being horrible to each and mean to each other. <laughs> when I watch Star Trek, they don't need to talk like that. They're more evolved, you know? Mm-hmm. And I don't want to see the Admiral saying, fuck, you know, that that pulls me out. Now I've had people say, Oh, you're just what's wrong with you? That's the way people talk. Yes. I know that I talk that way too, but I don't want them to be talking that. You know, I, I think there was a scene in Star Trek IV, The Voyage Home, where Kirk explains to Spock why the profanity. You know, well, they, you know, people think that in order to be, you know, recognized, they have to. I, I, I don't think there's a place for that on Star Trek. I think it, those mm. people should be better than we are. You know. <laughs> 